bold, be brave, be extraordinary, be vulnerable, be real, be curious, be true, be you. Welcome to Trusting Your Gut with world-class energy intuitive, Katherine McIntosh, a show designed to awaken you to enjoy the process of evolving, have fun along the way, and learn to listen to those silent in-between moments. You are the expert of your own life, and nobody knows more about the next steps to take in your journey than you. So please, listen to your gut and discover what's waiting for you to explore. Here is your host, Katherine McIntosh. All right, my magical friends, welcome to today's episode. So we are going to be talking about consistency. And I think this is an interesting topic, especially for those of you that are highly sensitive, empathic, follow the energy, maybe you're an energy worker, or massage therapist, or have some sort of a coaching, consulting, healing practice. Um, consistency can be quite a challenge for those of us that want to follow energy. And today I'm going to be sharing just a few of my own points of views and wisdoms along the way um, about why adapting and uh, a practice of consistency and also what exactly might be beneficial for you to practice consistently and how that could dramatically change your life. And so years ago, I, I, you know, had a practice. I kind of, I traveled around the world. I would buy one way plane tickets. I sometimes wouldn't know where I was staying. I wouldn't know how many people were going to show up to my workshops. Like I was really willing to just follow the energy. And I got to be honest, sometimes it was a little scary. Sometimes it was a little like, oh my God, I must be crazy. And you know, at times I felt crazy. But I had this hit one time and I was like, wow, what happens if I offer something where I show up for 15 minutes a day, Monday through Friday, every day, um, at the same time every day for an entire year, and I offer that to people and what would happen if they start showing up? And so I did. And at first I thought I was crazy. I'm like, how am I going to deal with this with my travel schedule? What am I going to, you know, how am I going to think of something to give them every day? Like it was a really, um, it was a challenging choice for me at the time. And when I did it, it was like, I picked a time in the morning. I offered it to those that were on my list and surprisingly had, I don't know, close to a hundred people show up. And for an entire year, these a hundred people showed up. And it's funny because when I first started it and thought of it, I was panicked. <laughs> Oh my God, I, I'm doing something consistently at the same time every day. Oh my God, that must be boring. Or what am I going to do with myself? And it was interesting because I believe we started that practice in November. I think it was 2019. And then we hit March of 2020. I think that's right. And then COVID happened. And I was like, wow, I'm so grateful that we have this daily thing where we can meet online and sort of come together to create a different possibility. And what happened in that year, not just for me, but for everybody who chose to show up and do the work, it was life-changing. And I realized that showing up consistently showing up when I say I'm going to show up, doing something every day and like putting it in the calendar and putting it in the schedule. It was life-changing because for me as an intuitive, as an energy worker, I'm always kind of following the energy, but sometimes it can be to my detriment right? Where I'm not setting up a schedule, or maybe I don't have a daily practice. And since that time, which was November of 2019, 
I have written in my schedule daily practices that I do to help me be consistent. Because here's the deal. Well, we're all consistent at something. So whether we're cons consistent at being inconsistent, we're consistent with not planning, we're consistent with people pleasing and making other people's dreams and desires and wishes more valuable and more important than you, right? You can consistently judge yourself. You can consistently tell yourself you're not enough. You can consistently tell yourself you need to go on a diet. Those are all things. We all do things consistently. It's just a matter of, are you putting your energy consistently into things that are depleting your energy or watering you down or creating more chaos in your life? Or are you putting your energy into things that consistently help you evolve, help you grow, help you work towards your dreams and so much more. And so I wanted to just offer some possibilities for you and, and allow you to start to look at where are you avoiding being consistent? Are you avoiding being consistent with your finances or savings or investing, right? We will do what we believe we are. So if you believe you are a success, you will consistently do and choose and think like a success, right? If you believe that you're not good enough, you will consistently do and think and choose things that match that you're not good enough. And so Consistency helps to rewire and repattern the programs in the body and in the brain and in the gut to begin to change your identification of yourself. And so let's say you don't think you're enough, but you commit to the next year put a little 15 minute, 30 minute timer and you put it in your calendar. And for 30 minutes, you're working on believing that you're enough. You're working on maybe you go for a walk for 30 minutes and you like think that all your dreams, like you walk as if all your dreams are coming true. If you do that for an entire year consistently, you will have a much different identity of yourself, you'll start to believe in yourself more. And when you believe in yourself more, you make different life choices, right? Like we all make different life choices when we feel like we're enough, when we feel confident, when we feel successful, when we feel empowered, when we feel sexy, when we feel alive, we make very different life choices food choices, business choices, friendship choices, even choices with our time every day. Whereas if you're not feeling like you're enough, maybe you're stuck on TikTok or on social media and you're scrolling. And every time you scroll, you're comparing yourself and feeling not good enough that is consistent. Some of you consistently scroll social media and not necessarily um, in a way that is a contribution to your evolution. Pretty fascinating. And so I'd love to invite you to look at what do you say you want and you keep not choosing actions or thoughts or feelings or emotions to match getting you where you want to go, right? And where do you say you want one thing, but you believe it's not possible on the other side? right? I'll give you guys an example. So today I was in uh, the intuitive energy course and the intuitive energy course is a course that you take in your own time online. And then I have follow-up coaching calls every week. And in those follow-up coaching calls, we ask questions, we talk about topics and possibilities. You get personal coaching from me. And so we're having this conversation today and someone came on the call and they were like, all right, Catherine. <laughs> and they called me out on something. And I'll tell you what that is in a second. So I truly believe that I can be whatever energy 
right? I can be whatever energy I need to be in order to create the life I want to have. And some of those things in my brain at the time that I choose them sometimes feel impossible, right? And yet I'll consistently show up and energize that dream until it starts to feel possible. And as it feels possible, I start to change my identity. And then I start to attract things that match that possibility. Well, I got called out today, right? And what I got called out on is I've been dealing with some issues with my eyes And I didn't realize it until this person called me out on it. She said, you're so brilliant at that. I wonder why you're not using it for your eyes. And I went, oh, oh, busted, busted. And I went, oh my gosh, you know what I've been consistently telling myself? I've been consistently telling myself, oh, when I have the surgery, right? I need to have surgery on one of my eyes that I have been putting off. And yet I know I have helped people, right? Turn on their body's own healing abilities for them to be able to heal themselves. I end up being a conduit, not the one doing the healing. I'm just turning on the body's natural ability. And yet I have not been consistently turning on my body's natural ability to heal itself. And so I've been putting it off. I've been putting it off. I've been putting it off. And what I've been consistently telling myself is when I have the surgery, instead of consistently telling myself and my body and my eyes a message that could begin the healing process, right? It's fascinating, fascinating. And so I want to invite you to consider that perhaps you are not congruent with the things you say you want. You're not consistently backing up what you want with thoughts, feelings, actions, right? Sensations that support what you would like to get. Instead, you're consistently judging saying you're not good enough, maybe you're comparing, maybe you feel like you're always behind, right? That is the antithesis, right? And goes against what you actually desire to create, right? It's pretty fascinating. So I'll give you another example because I think examples are always helpful. So I had a friend long time ago who was always saying, I want to lose weight. 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 But what she was doing consistently was exactly the opposite of what would get her to change her body. She would go to Starbucks and order a venti frappuccino. She'd get a big muffin. Maybe she'd get a cake pop. Um, Lunch would be a burger and fries and a milkshake. Dinner would be, you know, something along the same lines. But she, literally was eating whatever she wanted, whenever she wanted. And she loved food. And, you know, we were, we were together one time and I, I would spent a lot of time together and I just looked at her. I was like, you know, your actions don't match what you say, right? Now check this out, you guys, you're probably going to, you're going to think that she probably changed her habits. And I'm like, nope. She didn't change her habits. Guess what she changed? She changed the message she was telling herself. And so the message she was telling herself was, I need to lose weight. 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 But the actions didn't match the message. So instead of changing the actions, she began to change the message. And so the message she told herself, because I called her out on it, when we were together and I was like, you know, you might want to change what you're telling yourself because <laughs> the truth is you want to be able to eat whatever you want, whenever you want it. And she went, oh my gosh. And so then she started telling herself a consistent message of, I love, I want to eat whatever I want to eat whenever I want to eat it. and..." 
my body transforms, right? So she started eating like same thing that she was always eating, but she changed the message she was telling herself. And within a few months, she lost close to 40 pounds, right? She didn't change what she was eating. She changed the message she was telling herself. And so I believe this is a really powerful lesson and metaphor for where in your life are you giving yourself opposing information. Your actions don't match what you say you want. And so you have two choices. You either change what you say you want or you change your actions. Pretty simple. Change your thoughts. You change your feelings. You change like all of the, the emotions around it, the sensations, the feelings, the thoughts, the patterns around it, right? And then it can change. And so this is your invitation to begin to look at your life, right? To look at your life and go, where am I not congruent with my actions and my desires? Right? So someone's asking, what did she start saying? So she basically, we just looked at what her what she was telling herself and she changed what she was telling herself because the truth was I want to be able to eat whatever I want, whenever I want, and my body transforms. Now, this isn't permission to ignore what your body actually is asking for, right? This isn't permission to eat McDonald's every day and go, oh, well, it should work, right? This is permission to be a detective in your own life story and look at, is the message you're telling yourself consistent with your actions, your patterns, your behaviors, your thoughts? right? And if not, which one needs to change? Either your actions need to change or your desires, what you say you want needs to change. And so it's very, um, it's an, um, it's amazing what can happen and the miracles that can occur when you begin to tell yourself a consistent, congruent message, right? It's got to be consistent, and it's got to be congruent. And if it's not, what you're doing in your body is creating conflict. And that conflict doesn't always help the healing process. So sometimes conflict is good, right? Sometimes tension is good. Tension is good in relationships. Tension can be good in sexual chemistry, right? Tension in where you are in a business and where you want to go, that tension can create momentum, but you got to put your energy into the right side of the tension, depending on what you desire. It's pretty fascinating stuff. And so at any point in any day, if you say you would like to be an entrepreneur, right? but you've got some conflict either on the thought side and pattern side of things, or you have some conflict in the desire. Maybe you don't actually want to be an entrepreneur, right? I have worked with many people and seen many people over the years that be like, I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to be an entrepreneur. And then they realize they don't actually want to be an entrepreneur, but they do want more freedom. They do want more anonymity. They do want more choices. They do want more challenges. And so every time you're faced with a area of your life that isn't properly working, you want to ask yourself, what's the conflict? What are the two opposing sides of that area of your life? So you look at money right? What's the conflict that you're having with money? You say you want to buy a house, but you're not spent, you're not saving any money to buy that house. There's a conflict. Either you just want to spend whatever you want to spend whenever you want to spend it. And you don't put away money towards a financial goal, towards a financial investment, right? 
or you want to buy the house and you start changing your thought patterns. You start changing your behaviors. You start putting away a certain amount of money every day or every week, right? And there is incredible science behind the power of compounding interest. It's proven in investing theories, right? Where if you put a dollar a day away for a year, it's been said, and you put it in a you know money market fund that maybe gets you somewhere between 6% and 8% back over the course of, of a certain amount of time, a dollar a day will become a million dollars because of compounding interest. It's the same thing with consistent thoughts, consistent patterns, consistent behaviors. You start doing something consistently, you're delivering a signal to the universe about what you want. And guess what? Do that for long enough periods of time over a long enough, sorry, I said that, do that for like consistently every day for long enough periods of time, you're going to start to create some momentum, which will create compounding interest, which will allow things to come into your world in a very different way. And when this happens, it happens organically. It happens as if by magic, you'll be surprised. You'll start attracting more money. It's quite fascinating. And so you want to look at where in your life, what parts of your life is your tank on empty? How's your relationships? Are they on empty? How's your relationship to yourself? Is it on empty? Is it on full, right? If it's on empty, where's the conflict? What are you telling yourself? You're telling yourself you want to make time for yourself, but you keep making time for everyone else but you. And I see this a lot in the healing like industry, right? In the transformational industry, in the coaching industry, people end up spending so much time focused. And I know I've been guilty of this focused on, let me show up for everybody else. Let me give, give, give. And then sometimes my tank is empty and I go, Oh, I'm not being consistent with filling my tank up right now. That's not true for me in this moment in time, but certainly when I was a starting out entrepreneur in this industry and with you know, basically raising a child on my own, it was quite intense. And there were definitely days in which my tank was empty and they're still right. Life is always going in patterns and waves and cycles and seasons. And so some seasons we have way more energy. Some seasons we're doing way better with our own self-care. Other seasons, we might be giving away too much. We might be working too much, right? And so you just have to look at where, what areas of your life are you in conflict? What areas of your life are you not? And so we've got the relationship, relationship to self. You've got the area of money, right? Finances, business. Business is probably a separate topic than than finances itself, right? But you can look at, okay, business. And, and by the way, if you work for someone else, you're in the business of taking care of yourself. You're in the business of going to a job or, you know, being in at home working whenever you can. And so you want to really start to note what areas of your life is your tank full? Do you feel satisfied and fulfilled? And maybe you still want more, which is great. And it's also great if you're just satisfied and you're pleased with where your life is at in that area of your life. We all almost always have at least one area of our lives that at least is tank half full at least, right? And hopefully if you're listening to this, you have many areas of your life in which your tank is at least half full, if not closer to full, but I bet you also have areas of your life in which your tank is slightly empty and where it is empty is where you want to look for 
the conflict. And when you can identify the conflict and then you start to identify, okay, do I want to change what I say I want? Or do I desire to change the actions, thoughts, and behaviors and patterns that don't match what I want? So now I have to change those. Okay. So grab a piece of paper, pen and paper, and you're going to just make um, a list of the, the areas of your life. Right. So business. Even if you're working for someone else, even if you're a single mom, even if you're a stay-at-home mom, business, it, you're, you're in the business of raising children, right? One of the most understated jobs in the world. Over the weekend, I saw this cute little reel and it was all of these famous people winning awards or Grammys or Oscars or, and they were thanking their moms. Mom, mom, I got to thank my mom. My mom is the reason. And some of them were in tears. Some of them got very emotional. I was like, being a mom is probably the most understated job in the world, right? We never get a break. (laughs) And that's okay. But how do you take care of yourself? So you're going to look at your business. You're going to write down business finances, health, right? You also can do a category for your body. You can do a category for your relationships, right? You can do a category for friendships, which can also fall under relationship, right? And so make sort of a list of the areas of your life that feel very important. So some of you might have health, some of you might have fitness as a category, some of you might have nutrition as a category, right? You can break down specific categories. And so for example, if you are in the business of being a mom, but you'd like to start maybe two to five hours a week, something on the side, that can be another category under business. And then you're going to look at where's my tank? Is my tank on empty? Is my tank half full? Is my tank full? Is it a quarter of the way full? Is it just kind of analyze and then ask the question, okay, what, what are the two conflicts, right? And when you look at what are the two conflicts, you now have information for you to be able to work with what you would like to change and or tweak and or transform. So we're going to be back. We'll talk about some more topics. If you have a question about this area of your life and you would like to call in, you're welcome to call in. It's got to be on topic. It's got to be a contribution. (laughs) Um, You can call into the radio show at 202 five, seven, zero, seven, zero, five, seven. And, um, I'll take live callers and kind of give you a little bit of a download. So thank you for listening to the show. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after the break. Om times TV. Do you trust you? Do you trust your body? What if the key to unlocking the weight pain, suffering, fear, anxiety, addictions, traumas, and sorrows was already inside of you. Learn to love the skin you are in so you can create the body, business, and life you love. Everyone always says you can't explain what Catherine does, you just have to experience it. From Hollywood actors to New York Times best-selling authors to some of the world's wealthiest and most successful, no two experiences are the same. For private sessions, online courses, live events, and the latest book Jack Canfield calls Game Changer and should be required reading for everyone, go to katherinemackintosh.com. K-A-T-H-E-R-I-N-E-M-C-I-N-T-O-S-H.com. Imagine becoming a super influencer. Reinvent yourself. Invest in your brand and then manifest your success with a robust spheric approach. 
OM Times Media and Broadcasting offers a unique and multifaceted way to become the spiritual and conscious influencer you deserve to be by putting your message across our powerful platform with its proven record of integrity and excellence. Through our produced shows, OM Times offers the opportunity to become a social media TV personality, a radio show host, an OM Times magazine columnist, and a syndicated podcaster, all in one shot. By live streaming your show on OM Times TV and broadcasting it across the extensive OM Times radio and TV networks, you become more than a host. You become an ambassador and a force for positive change. OM Times, open yourself to the possibilities. I want to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I need to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Why can't I eat, eat, eat apples and bananas? Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. All right, my friends. So welcome back where we are talking about consistency. So many people definitely struggle with the concept and avoid doing things consistently that sort of propel your life forward. And, you know, I really believe that the more that you propel your life forward, right, you will become addicted to doing things consistently that help open up your mind, open up your life and help open you to evolving. Cause you know what? We're always changing. We're either changing for the worse or changing for the better, depending on what we consistently think about ourselves, depending on what we consistently put in our bodies, depending on how we consistently feel about ourselves. And so almost all of us are consistent. We're consistent at something. And you just have to take a look at, am I consistent with what's moving the needle forward in the direction of my dreams or what's moving the needle backwards, so to speak, or in a direction that I don't want to go? And each and every one of you are your own private investigators into being able to take stock in your life and in the areas of your life that matter. So maybe fitness really matters to you, right? Maybe relationship really matters to you. Maybe you've been wanting to get into a relationship for a very long time, but you are consistently telling yourself you're not enough. Maybe you're not lovable. Maybe you continue to consistently repeat and relive the traumas and sort of life events of your past where you have proof that relationships don't work for you, but you want a relationship. So that there's the inconsistency, right? There's the conflict. And so you have to either change what you're saying, which is, okay, maybe I like to relive in the past and I don't actually want a relationship. That might be true. That's okay. The point isn't to judge yourself. The point isn't to criticize or or make yourself wrong. The point is to become your own private investigator and look into the truth of do your desires, right? Do your actions match your desires? Do your desires match your actions? Do your desires match your, your behaviors? If they don't, you have to change something in order to begin to see a shift or a change in that area of your life, right? Pretty cool. Pretty cool. And love that you guys are writing in and commenting and all of that good stuff. Yeah. And so I really want to invite all of you to consider that there's hope and it's never too late. It's never too late to start to do something that consistently makes 
you feel better about yourself. One of the greatest joys in life is to see progress, right? Tiny, tiny, small shifts. And so one of the practices that I got into a long time ago after reading Lewis's Howe's book, his first book that he wrote, um, The School of Greatness. And in that book, he recommended to sort of survey your day. So either at the end of your day before you go to bed, right? Grabbing a journal, grabbing a notebook, or in the beginning of your day, the following day, I think he used to do it at night. I started doing a habit of doing it first thing in the morning. When I would wake up, I would review the day before. And what I would do in this review is I would look at what did I do yesterday? So I started to be consistent in practicing, identifying what did I do yesterday? I used to be in the habit of I I could never get enough done. There's never enough time in the day. I didn't do anything today. I didn't get enough done. And then when I started doing this practice that's in his book is I would write down everything I did the day before, right? Called my mom. I sent out 10 emails. I called three businesses. I saw six clients. I picked up my son from school. I made dinner. I made breakfast. I made lunch. I'm like, oh my gosh, I do a lot more in a day than I ever gave myself credit. Well, guess what? After consistently revisiting my day every day and then recognizing I do way more than I ever gave myself credit, I started to get more done. I started to be more effective with my time. I started to be more intentional and then I had more space and more freedom right? And so I highly encourage if you're listening to this and it resonates with you, I highly encourage every single one of you to begin to adopt a practice of consistency that helps you see the progress you're making on a daily basis. Another thing that I do consistently besides reviewing my day or in addition to reviewing my day, I would review, right? And I asked this of somebody in, in Saint-Tropez last summer I, and very successful businessman, just a joy to be around, such a delight. And I said to him, did you all always know you'd be successful? And he was like, oh no, Catherine, I didn't. And I said, well, what did you start to do or when did you know? He said, I started to review my day in business and I would ask, okay, what did I do today that really worked, that moved the needle forward? And they would say, and he said he would ask for more of that to show up in his life. And then he said, I'd also review what didn't work or what didn't go so well. And then he said he would consistently practice imagining or envisioning or seeing himself do something different, but he was specific, right? So let's say that you do something and it doesn't go so well. You want to, instead of judging yourself or making yourself wrong or blaming the situation or blaming another person, you want to adopt this habit of going, okay, that didn't work. If I were to do that thing next time, what would I do different? And then you practice it in your head consistently so that next time a situation that is similar occurs, you're prepared both physically, mentally, and energetically to respond, behave, and think different. There is medicine in the magic of consistency. And so for all of you out there, start today, right? Start, start small. Okay. I notice that I consistently am waking up with anxiety. Okay. What can I start consistently doing different that might move the needle on my consistency? Okay. I'm going to wake up in the morning and I'm going to write a list of three things I'm grateful for. 
right? And when you do that, guess what? It changes the signal you put out in the world. There's huge science around the vibration of gratitude being one of the highest vibrations on the planet. And so if you start consistently practicing gratitude, guess what? You start raising your vibration. When you raise your vibration, you attract different. When you attract different, you behave different. You think different. You open new doors to new possibilities in your life. And I honestly think that's what life is all about. It's not about getting to the dream and then being done. It's about the joy of, and Tony Robbins talks about this, the joy of making progress every step along the way. You are an evolutionary being and you can either evolve forward or devolve if you are not looking at what it is you can start to think different, what it is you can start to practice different, what it is you can start to look at life different. So my friends, there's always room every moment of every day to go after your dreams and start making small changes. So in the area, we're given, we're given some tips, right? So in the area of health and body and body in particular, especially for those of you that struggle with your weight or your body image, a few things that I started doing several years ago consistently that really changed the game for me is I started consistently drinking two glasses of water first thing in the morning. I started consistently taking prebiotics and probiotics, right? I started to consistently meditate in an infrared sauna blanket, right? I started to consistently practice gratitude. And then as I practiced and consistently did those things, I started to make different life choices in regards to food and weight and exercise and movement, right? I went from consistently overworking, meaning working out and doing it in a way that I didn't know was keeping my cortisol levels and my stress hormones quite spiked. I was over exercising. And so I started to consistently walk every day. And the habit of walking also dramatically changed everything in my life. So when I would take these walks, I would consistently practice walking as if this is a Joe Dispenza thing that he talks about. And so walk as if you walk as if you're already where you want to be. I live in Aspen, Colorado, and there are amazing, amazing, amazing homes everywhere I look. And so when I go on my walks, I will imagine myself walk as if I'm the owner of one of the homes that I look at and I go, oh my gosh, I would love to live there. I would love to live in that property. And I'm kind of a weirdo. So when I walk or I see people's homes or see people's cars or watch people drive, I'm always like, what's their life like? Right? What are they doing? What are they thinking? What's their career like? What's their family life like? I am curious. And so I will walk as if I am the owner of one of those homes. And instead of going, oh, I don't own that home or I don't have the money or it's not possible for me, I start to what? Change my chemistry, right? Start to change my physical identity. But guess what? I also start to change my energetic identity. And so some of you have consistently been adopting uh, an identity that isn't congruent with where you want to go. And so go on walks and walk as if and start to consistently begin to go in that direction.
my friends, the change is within each and every single one of you, right? And it's about starting small. It's knowing that you have that capacity inside of you and nobody can do it for you. People can guide you. People can hold space for you. But at the end of the day, you're the one with your thoughts, you're the one with your patterns and behaviors and, you know, the trauma or unpleasant experiences that you've had in your life. You can change them if you change what you consistently focus on. So start focusing on how you feel. Start focusing on where you want to go and less about where you are or where you have been, or what's been in your past, or what's happened that you didn't want to have in your past, you know, stop focusing on things that don't bring you joy. So my magical friends, that is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed the show. As always, come back every week. You can always call in live with a question. And I just want to thank you for listening to the show. And if you are listening and you resonate with today's show, please subscribe, share, right? Hit a like button. Um, maybe pass it on to somebody that you know might benefit from this message and come back next week. And we can't wait to see you. Thanks for being here. Catherine is not a medical practitioner nor a licensed therapist. She has strong opinions and will express them and truly believes that you are your best advocate for any and every area of your life. If you need medical advice, please consult your physician.